Here's how to connect traditional home landline phones to an analog telephone adapter. Locate the RJ11 jacks in your home. Ideally, you should find one near your modem router and AC power. If you're unlucky, you'll have to run some cable and install a RJ11 jack near your modem router. Do not run telephone cabling in parallel with your home's electrical system wiring. Look for the telephone company's D-Mark. It's likely a box mounted on an outside wall of your home. I can follow telephone cabling from the box to where it enters inside the home. On the other side of the wall where the cables entered, it looks like this. If telephone service has not been discontinued, DC voltage will be present. If there's an incoming phone call, AC voltage will be present. Best practice is to not touch the bare copper conductors. This is one of a series of videos about converting a home phone to voice over IP. To find the videos in this series, click on the channel name, go to the playlist tab, and look for home telephone, internet, and cable service. The wiring for a phone system with one line is simple. Follow the cable coming from the DMARC to some sort of terminal block on the inside of the home. You might find a cable with four conductors known as JK or Quad. In most cases, only the green and red conductors will be used. The black and yellow are normally spare and can be used to install a second phone line. You may find a cable with a different color scheme. Green is the same as white with smaller blue marks, and red is the same as blue with smaller white marks. A typical wiring diagram will look something like this. The incoming cable from the D-Mark will have its green and red conductors terminated on some sort of terminal block. A cable will go from the terminal block to each phone jack. All the greens will be connected on one point and all the reds on another. The RJ11 jacks will also be terminated green to green and red to red. If yellow and black are landed, the jack is pre-wired for a second line. The connector cable that goes between the RJ11 jack and your phone or modem has six positions, but only two wires connected, the red and the green. The first step is to disconnect and safety off the phone company's incoming wires. The phone company's voltage could damage the ATA. If you're lucky and had an RJ11 jack next to your modem router, simply connect the ATA to the RJ11 jack and you're done. If the RJ11 jack that you want to use already has something plugged into it, you can buy a splitter plug it into the jack, connect the ATA and the phone network. You are disconnecting the telephone company equipment from the phone network and adding your own equipment at a different location. The preferred method to add a new RJ11 jack is to run a cable directly back to the terminal block and connect green to green and red to red. If that's not convenient, and you may already have wiring like this on your phone network, you can run a cable from an existing jack and add a new one. Again, red goes to red and green goes to green. If you are switching from a DSL to a cable modem, you can remove the filters from your phones. If you have DSL, transfer the incoming telephone company cable to a new block run a Cat5 or better cable from the terminal block to a new RJ11 jack. Quad cable is not rated for DSL speed and it might slow down your connection. Then connect your DSL modem router to the new RJ11 jack and your ATA and feed that into an RJ11 jack on the other network that you created. I hope you find this video helpful. 
a thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name, know how now to find other videos, and thanks for watching.